Yo. Yo, what's up? Ryan. How All right. Going? It's going good, man. All right, so I told you about this. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I wanted to come by the shop. It's after hours. Everyone's gone, and that's what you do, man. Sometimes you stay after, like, yeah. for years. Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to, to spend a, a minute talking with you, man. Okay, good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too, you know, for you guys watching right now, Ryan's a friend of mine uh, for, I don't know, 12 years or longer. Probably 12, yeah. 2020. Sounds about right. Yeah, and uh, we've done a lot of a lot of cars together and or, or unofficially done stuff together creatively and blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, our friendship is kind of like, it's kind of weird to put him in front of the camera. I mean, you know, I did that vlog with you about this car at SEMA in the yeah, Tread Pass. Right. But, you know, this is more about Rywire. Yeah. Right? Because people see your Instagram, mm -hmm. okay? People, you have your YouTube channel. Right. And you started to be better about making videos. Trying to. Uh, you know, so, so that people, because some people just didn't know who you were. Yeah. They know your name, they know the shop, they buy products. Right. But like you've talked about for years, we'd go to events and there were times where um, people just didn't even know that you were Rywire. Right. And that's, that's changing, right? I think so. I mean, especially, I'd say the YouTube channel is probably the best for that, just because I'm literally like in front of the camera and talking. Yes. Um, or let's just say like YouTube in general, like the features on like Hoonigan and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they'll, they're able to see me, see the car, and then you can put two and two together. And then when you see me at an, at an event now, now it's pretty obvious that um, I'm Ryan. Yeah, so I mean, look, you know, um, sometimes I think we sort of forget, we take it for granted. But yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's something to to do and you're being more active about it. And so I think that that's working out. But, um, you know, a lot of people, they see the cars all over the world, from Japan to Australia, and especially obviously here in the US, right? right. But they don't really know, like, the story, mm. okay? They don't really know a lot of it. And I mean, you know, there's only so much time, right? But I mean, just, for those who don't know, right, hit them with the year and when you started wiring and why. Um, probably, let's see, da, 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 think back, uh, about 2000, 2001. Okay. This is like uh, high school, college, like right in that kind of area. Um, literally like started because I was trying to do engine swaps. Okay. You know, I had a CRX and and the goal was to do a B16 swap at first yeah. and um, uh, you know, a GSR swap after that and then we did a K-series swap after that. So um, it was always just to be able to do my swap, get the engine in the car and um, I was always just kind of a do-it-yourselfer and it was easy for me to just try and you know, sort through what I could out, you know, figure out on the web and um, you know, reading, asking people, uh, kind of mentors, if you will, like people that um, I looked up to, yeah. ask them questions and, and it turned into kind of DIY and figuring out how to do all the conversions with the early, the early Hondas and CRXs and stuff like that. So. All right, so it was a CRX that you cut your teeth on. Yeah. And you just, at some point, sort of figured out that wiring wasn't that weird to you. Yeah, it, I mean, it made sense because as long as I was looking at a proper diagram that, that was, um, you know, obviously like well put together in the sense of maybe it was like a, a ETM cut of a, you know, whatever, just thrown online. Yeah. And if I could get some kind of data and figure out that the pinouts were good, yeah. and I was looking at wire colors that made sense on the sensors, yeah. I was able to get something together. And, and I mean, what, when, it, when it didn't work, it was easy to figure out. So that was, that was the difference between probably most, most people um, when, when they're, you know, just like okay at wiring. It's like they could follow guides and they can kind of figure it out. But when you come into a, st a stopping point, like a stumbling area, yeah. you're able to naturally go, okay, well, let's step, you know, let's step back about this a little bit. Yes. Think about it logically and then come up with a way to fix it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the main difference, I'd say. And, you know, I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, 20 years ago, there was no access to... To pins and plugs. Yeah. Right. So what did you do? Uh, junkyard diving was. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not proud of this, but uh, we we uh, we probably you know five five dollar discount uh, 
five, five just a bunch discount. of plugs. Yeah, I just stole plugs. So you would go to the junkyard, yeah. right, and then clip off the ones you needed. Yeah, I see. I see. So we would we would get what we could, and then sometimes sometimes uh, you know, people will reach out to you and be like, hey, I have all these harness cuts. Do you want them? Like, hell yeah, I want them. Yeah. Um, or it would be, you know, send me your core. So send me core harnesses, and I would kind of put together stuff. But um, back then it was not brand new, not not like a manufacturer level, you know, kind of. Parts. Yeah. It was like send me what you got, and then we'll just kind of make it work. All right. So you go from I think I got this. I can look at this diagram. I need to figure something out because I don't know how to get my CRX to run electrically. So I had to figure it out. Yeah. To hey, can you make this for me? To right. So let's, instead of the history lesson part, let's jump, right? So you go, uh, let's say, what, 18 years later, right? Mm -hmm. Well, to, to present day, but you were in Northern California, and when did you move down here? Um, I don't remember. Maybe like 10, 10 11 years ago? Does that, do you, do you remember? Yeah. Probably, because I mean. That was when we started doing the car together. Yeah, literally, like, you probably know good for, like, you know, when, when your green car was actually finished. Yeah. That was about the time I moved down. Down. Yeah, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll talk more about that. I think that that's a cool story for people. Yeah. Um, but um, we go, you go from the the house and the, the bedroom, mm. right, on a table. Yeah. To, I'm going to turn around here, to, okay, so we got a KITB right there. I'm not even going to talk about that right here. But, I mean, you have bins of plugs by the hundreds, by the thousands. It's just loom and plugs and pins, and you're cranking out harnesses by the thousands. Right. Right, really by the thousands. Yeah. And um, and then you work with CSF for the your uh, tuck radiator. Right. And let's see if anyone can know, knows what that is peeking out. And then the GT3 and a CRX project that you're working on. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, you know, there's a lot about what you produce, mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't realize what all it took to get to this point, right? That's what these, these are, these are not about cars. This is not about the business. This is about what it took, like the behind the scenes to get to this point. Right. And I mean, whether it was a car you were doing for SEMA, my car, I have been with you or you have been with me at some stupid hours. Yeah. Like stupid, like, like we're, we're unhealthy, we're yeah. snapping at each other. Like not sleeping at not all. Not sleeping, and um, you know, I think it's kind of a, uh, it sounds redundant to keep talking about you have to work harder than someone else, but yet people still somehow miss that point, Yeah. right? I mean, and you gotta think about it as um, I, you, you make a lot of sacrifices, you know, like m money was not, the money that I made went back into the business yes. for, years yes and and you know we're at the point even right now where i'm making big sacrifices to try to grow it even bigger yes, than yes, it is. Yes. so uh yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of of months and paychecks and stuff that just get missed sure uh, because it just gets all completely you know 100 percent. you know i gotta buy more of this product if i'm gonna if i literally add one product to our line yeah that could cost me, you know, a, a, a year of pay. Sure. You know what I mean? Like as a I, personal investment. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult to grow. Um, and we're, but we're growing at a pace that is manageable for me. Um, I've always been kind of scared or nervous about growing too fast, too, too quickly. Uh, so it's just, it's always been like a very organic growth, very or organic progression. Um, like, I mean, we've been, I've been chipping away at it for the last 20 years. Right. So, um, you know, I mean, maybe some people would have been able to escalate my business at a faster rate, but that wasn't always the goal. The goal a lot of times was just to um, fill a void of my passion, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, doing some of these project cars, like a SEMA build, it's already, it's 100% gonna be a loss as far as you're, if you're trying to talk like monetarily, uh, it's, it's not possible to really make money. Um, it's just gonna be, a means to really fill the void of me my, and to grow my passion. You yeah, know, like it's, you have a creative outlet. Right, exactly. And I mean, some days when we're building these looms and they're all kind of the same, 
it, it can kind of get old, you know? Sure. So what I'd like to do is I like to, I have ideas and I like to be able to express myself with the cars that we build for, let's say SEMA or a, a, an event like that, or even just um, building specific customers cars. You know, like there was a, a Buick Grand National that we did as like yep. a really random car for like a quote unquote Honda guy like yeah. myself to do. But um, that car was a lot of fun. It was something different um, and it did a lot of things. You know, it was on television, it, it was at LS Fest, it was racing, yeah. it was doing all these amazing things and it still has more growth. But just doing projects like that as an example is a nice like turn and just change for the everyday just packing orders and doing kind of the same style harnesses. So we have this car that was at this past SEMA 2019. Right. And um, we have, people can see it in the back, there's a white CRX. Yeah, that's another client. That's another client. So those are the, the, the creative, fun, passion projects. Yeah. Okay. But when, what we were talking about is, you know, you can't always do that because you'll just go under, right? Right. So the growth of the business from a one bedroom in a house to, you know, a few thousand square feet and having to expand. And I remember when you, I remember helping you when you moved in, it was like one shelf and a toolbox. Yeah. All right. And that's all this whole place was. And then it turned into racks on racks on racks. <laughs> but, um, you know, you just revamped a couple of things, right? Right. And you repurposed one of the rooms. Mm. All right, so let's go check that out real quick. Yeah, so this used to be like kind of an inventory room and we would actually work in the back. Yeah. And now we're kind of working back here instead. Um, so we're just, you know, building through different things. It's, um, it's a, you guys, it's not a glamorous thing, man. I mean, it's purposed, set up to what he needs to do. We don't have tile and we don't have like screens everywhere. No. <laughs> it's just, what you need to make what the customers need. Yeah. And that's about it, right? Yep. So, okay, so let's talk about growth. Right. Right, so obviously, one bedroom in a house to moving down to SoCal to getting a shop space to now we're jumping substantially, but, you know, to get up to present tense 2020. Right. right? How has the business grown? Um. It's, it's grown a little bit. Um, I hope that it's gonna grow more. We just signed up with Turn 14. Mm -hmm. So they're actually distributing our product. Yes. Um, so our whole catalog, everything online is, is um, an in-stock item. Yeah. So literally, you know, if you have a Turn 14 account, you can call them and you can say, um, you know, I want this part number from Rywire and if they don't stock it, then we'll just drop ship it. So, um, okay. Yeah, very I mean, cool. It's a, it's That's a, a big deal. It's a huge deal. Um, we did a, we did PRI this year. We had a booth. Yes. Um, a lot of people came up to me and they were very impressed by, um, our partnership with turn. I see. So we, we also may have some stuff with them in the future, like, you know, potential like car build kind of things. Yeah. 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 So that would be huge too. Yeah. Um, to be able to work with them to that capacity, yeah. you know, not just being like one of their distributors not just being you know like a builder that maybe like you know they would sponsor it's more like a, a closer knit like um it's it's uh it's kind of a family over there so very cool yeah could, i mean it could be really big you know yeah you know i've been i've been to turn 14's mm -hmm. you know center mm -hmm. and uh you know shout out to daryl and the staff over there really cool guys um that's a big deal right there's a massive distribution company yeah. and they picked up the product and now right. stock it so that's an option for people. Yeah. So um, actually, right now is you know February, and this is this is actually the best time of year for our business. A lot of like kind of we call it tax return season. Okay. And um, the yeah, like it's pretty wild. So numbers compared to last year in the same month. Yeah. Uh, we're actually in. We're higher than in 20 days. We're higher than than 30 days last year at our best time, if that makes sense. So we're already ahead um, by literally 10 days. So we're just gonna like smash our, our, our your Your, our your record, best our month's record. record. Yeah. Kill it. Kill it. And and that's a testament. So yeah. we're in the middle of first quarter of 2020 right. and you've so, destroyed your best month in 20 days. Right. So you have 10 more days. So right. you will annihilate that. Right. That's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful thing. And then there's also some revamping going on in the the front of front office the front front yeah. office so let's check that out sure right. obviously we have all these placards and, yeah you know, they're all over the place and we're gonna kind of try to 
I want it. I want it to feel kind of homey in here. Yeah. Um, kind of have like a couch people can sit down. Yeah. Um, really, like I get headaches a lot, and it'd be really nice to just be able to lay down <laughs> on a couch sometimes. Like the stress I, from work. I don't. I've literally like just laid on the floor, and I'm like, why don't I just have like a proper chair yeah. or something? So it'd be cool to have like just a couch, make it feel a little different. Um, yeah. So just this little front section right here. Maybe some paint, a rug, yep. something nice for people. Coffee table to set plants, drink, whatever. Hang up the plaques. Yeah, I really want to have a spot where it's kind of cool looking, different colors, plaques. Um, that's sort of my vision. Nothing crazy. I'm not trying to redo the floors in wood or anything like that. You know, I got to keep it keep it modest. But um, it'll be cool to it'll be cool to do. Yeah. So yeah, man. I mean, 20 years essentially, right? And moving down, being able to purchase a home, multiple cars, a truck um, for you to transport vehicles if you need to, track, SEMA, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Your, your GT3 RS um, and and the EA, which is at the Peterson Automotive Museum still. So, so personal cars, um, your home, revamping your home. Yeah. Um, but but all of this, you know, it's kind of you're you, you're like me in the sense that personal life is very low key. Yeah. So a lot of people don't really realize that. You know, they, they someone knows about your EA, someone knows about the the ITR, and someone knows about the truck, but some people don't realize about all of them, right? Okay. And that took a long time to accumulate. It isn't just well, something, yeah. right? Th that, that's the thing though when you're when you're when you're a car guy, it's like easy to you see something that you want or a good deal, you know, somebody offers you something, it's like, "Oh, okay. You make yeah. it happen, right?" So, yeah. And so you have and I mean you know, there's a there's a lot to that that I think people don't really realize. And when when we have our podcast episode, we, you know, people will be able to hear exactly how much work and time and the stories that we have. You and I alone have just stories, man. Yeah. I mean, of this is long before people really down here knew who you were. When I was able to get a hold of you and we were doing stuff well over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and you would just come down. Oh man, there's you guys. There's so many stories. Ryan would drive down from Northern California after working on a Friday. He'd show up, and we would hang out for one evening, and then work actually on this car to get this car ready um, at the deadline that I had designed for it. And uh, you know that was a testament to this guy's work ethic. And uh, he would just man there's there's just so many stories about you know the whole nsx crx thing you guys will uh he's gonna, <laughs> we're gonna tell you about it in the podcast but you know i mean it's a long day he's gotta go but um i wanted to go behind the scenes with ryan from rywire just so you guys have a little bit of an understanding it's dark outside it's crickets no one else is around and he's over here you know moving stuff around at the shop trying to figure out what to paint Put up plaques and all of which don't help his business but it's just to make it a little bit better yeah it's kind of long overdue right yeah yeah i mean i've been at this location right here for 10 yeah this was the almost, first one this was the first one so yeah. 10 years right and i'm like yeah stuff's looking a little old and you know well hey here, here's the last here's, a, here's a, a random last story so for people sure when how many years in this shop yeah were you here before you realized that the shower in the bathroom wasn't even a real shower? <laughs> How many years? A couple few years, probably. <laughs> you got well, I was like, oh, well, it's cool to have if yeah. I ever want to take a shower. <laughs> you guys, there's a shower in the bathroom, and he was just like, oh, okay, cool. You know, if I ever need to. But it took like three years before someone yeah. actually realized that Water's it's not, not hooked up. It's not even <laughs> connected. <laughs> And I was like, oh, yeah, I should definitely get, like, a curtain for this yeah. if I ever just want to take a quick shower, yeah. if I, like, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it, there's not even water, like, hooked up. <laughs> so, so the people who had this this location just built it as a display. For They did, like, tile or something yeah. like that. <laughs> there you go. So, um, you know, there's a lot, man. I mean, Ryan from Rywire, there's a reason why I've worked with him. There's a reason why I call him my friend. And um, there's a reason why he's successful. And it is literally driving in the middle of the night from Northern California to Southern California and back. It is sleeping one or two or three hours. It is dedicating yourself to the point where socially you suffer 
to create something long term, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, we'll, we're gonna delve real deep into that in the podcast. Yeah. So you guys stay tuned for that. Think bigger podcast, community conversations with Ryan from Rye Wire coming out. But uh, Ryan, thanks for letting me, uh, you know, <laughs> come over here late night and just, uh, you know, get get 20 minutes of your time. Of course. Um, appreciate you, you guys. Uh, Think Bigger Project, behind the scenes, vlogs, you know, appreciate you guys and uh, tune into the podcast to learn really what's behind the man. <laughs> All right. fired up my car like I like I mentioned we're doing some changes people don't understand that they're minor they're major and they're all invisible right and so uh, we'll talk about that in another video but um, I always I always want to to touch on something okay I, I do it with everyone you know me I'm all about the work right I'm all about the work and and I, and I do that on purpose because I feel like it's very dangerous I think it's very I think we're in a very dangerous age with social media and and younger people especially who come into any culture, any community, any type of dream and they're they're so focused on the passion part. They're so focused on the the fun and I think that they get led in the wrong direction because it's not fun, man. Like there's a lot of times where it is not fun. Like there's a lot of of, of personal sacrifice. Right. So anyways, the point is that whether it be wiring, whether it be any kind of business, automotive or not, right? Mm-hmm. Why? Why do you think that you, this many years later, have made it? By very real definitions, that's not a figure of speech. You're, I mean, you're in the green, you have a successful, profitable business that provides a service to the community. You're a staple in, in the community that you chose to work in, right? Those are successes in every level, both monetarily, passionately, but in every other way. You have a home, you're getting married. I mean, these are very real life parts, parts right. of life that people kind of just don't think about. So the point is, why do you think that you have been able to make it when others haven't? Um, I can't say for sure, of course, but I think one of the reasons is um, my growth has been very like um, organic, if okay. you want to call it that. Um, I haven't really like grown too rapidly as a business. Uh, it's been very mildly, you know, slow, organic growth. Yep. I think is kind of the key, and that's how, that. Like me being younger and kind of thinking about it, like I never intended to quote unquote blow up overnight. Um, that's not like the goal. The goal was to just slow growth, maintain. Um, in it for the long run. Yeah, exactly. Like I see, I see the the bigger picture. The bigger picture. I had to say that. that. Yeah, you, it thinking is. bigger and seeing the grander, yeah. longer, bigger picture. And it's the truth. I mean, like I even in my when I was 25 years old, you know, and I was like hoping that it would be I would be at the point where I have a shop of my own, like yeah. where I am now, even for an example. Um, I never thought like, all right, next year I got to be in a shop. The year after that, I have to have X amount of employees. Like I've tried adding employees. I've tried staff. I've tried this things, and 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 sometimes it's just better to let it grow naturally 
instead of trying to force and push something. So I think that that's been kind of the secret of my to, you know success. Yes. Uh, there. I mean, it, you can look at it plenty of different ways. Sure. I mean, I could be bigger if I took leaps and bounds. Sure. I could be. If I moved at a slower pace, I could be bigger, I could be smaller, like whatever. But, yeah. but I just feel that I'm at the place that I am now because of slow, steady, organic growth, not trying to force anything and just have it flow naturally. Okay. And then final thing, right? If you had one thing to say to a kid who's 14, to a guy who's 34, everything in between, older, younger, whatever, that see this, that know of me, know of you, and everything of the above, right? Mm -hmm. If you had one thing, just one, that you had to tell them as, as a piece of advice that you think is the most helpful for whatever the hell they're trying to do, what would it be? I would say to um, set goals that are achievable. Um, you know, don't set a goal where it's like, I wanna have X car when I'm this age, or okay. have this amount of money. Do like a, 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 a weekly, a daily goal. Um, I think that that's kind of key for me. In the morning I wake up and I go, my goal is to accomplish, you know, get this customer's invoice done and get his harness built, get, you know what I mean? These small little goals. And it can Daily be, you wake up and start the day. Yeah, and I try to accomplish things that are difficult in the morning first. Yes. Because I know how my day can turn into have a whole, like I, I could, I could be thrown at, you know, and now I have to do this other thing. So yeah. if, if, if it's the most difficult thing, the thing I'm trying to focus on, accomplish that early okay. like in the AM before noon, let's say. And then if I can do that, then the rest of my day should go smooth. And I should be able to accomplish that goal. So I set myself daily goals. I also look at like a week. I don't really like write anything down per se, but my, but I guess the one thing to tell people um, to answer your question is to set small goals for yourself and use those as stepping stones. You know what I like? I like how you said you take on the ones that you know are gonna be the hardest first. I try to. Yeah, uh, I, I dig it. Okay, so set goals daily, hourly, weekly, monthly, right? Set them, right? Make them achievable stepping stones yeah. and go at it that way. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Hey, Ryan, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having um, me. You know what, guys? Thanks for coming, I should say. You're, you're welcome. Uh, you know what, guys? Uh, make sure you guys check him out when I put up when I put the BTS blog up. You know, I mean, you guys know Ryan, but if you don't, I'll put up his information, uh, his IG, his website, YouTube, etc. And you can see the stuff that he's doing, stuff that we've done together, etc. So, uh, you know, um, I appreciate you guys listening. And Ryan, thank you for giving us just a little bit of a taste of behind the scenes at Rodwire.